Gee, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Henshaw, some people say this book of yours is the work of a genius. Yes, I know. <laughs> In fact, the uh, Mystery Writers League has chosen me as author of the year. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> and now, if you'll excuse me, a television crew is coming over to interview me. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Little girl, if you don't the mind... The question is, sir, what is becoming of today's younger generation? And I am sure you are about uh, to volunteer an answer. Yes, I am. The younger generation is swimming in pollution. <laughs> That's what's happening. But for a small contribution from you, the older generation, you could send a fireside girl to camp. What do you say, sport? <laughs> <laughs> Young lady, you have touched me deeply. Here's a dime. A dime. A whole dime. <laughs> Are you sure you can spare it? Okay, okay, here's a quarter. Oh, big stuff. <laughs> Will you please go away? Hmm? Why, yes, sir, but I would like you to find my own personal copy of your mystery novel, Who? All right, only if you promise to leave. Yes, sir, fireside girls always obey. Sign my book and I'll go away. <laughs> There, there, now. It's been nice talking to you. Now, will you, you please just, you sure you uh, just go somewhere else, will you? All right, but be sure and say hello to your pretty wife who's platinum blonde. Thank you. And my wife isn't a platinum blonde. Come back here. She's not a platinum blonde, you say? <laughs> That's interesting because just last night I saw you sitting with this platinum blonde about 23 years old in the... In, in, <laughs> You were sitting with her in your car. Oh, no, 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 look, you must have made a mistake. No, you see, that wasn't my wife. That was, uh, that was my niece. Your niece? Yes, yes, I was teaching her how to drive. In the back seat? <laughs> All right, look. Here's a crisp five dollar bill. Now, why don't you just forget all about that silly car business? A oh? crisp ten dollar bill would make me forget quicker. <laughs> there you are, ten dollars. However, a twenty would dim my memory forever. <laughs> all right, there you are. Thank you very much, sir. Right, you can bring that equipment right in. Well, Mr. Henshaw, I'm Ralph Carter. Hello, Mr. Carter. Evening news. Yes, uh, yes, of course. It'll just take us a couple of minutes to get set up here, and then uh, you can face our uh, 20 million viewers. 20 million viewers? Gosh, how exciting! Mm, yes, I'm ready whenever you are, Mr. Carter. I say, Mr. Henshaw, yes. if you need somebody like me to tell the audience how great your book is, I would be glad to help. I would rather have hot oil poured up my nostrils. <laughs> Have you read Mr. Henshaw's book? Oh, yes, sir. Twelve times. Twelve times? That's what I said. Oh, Mr. Henshaw, I just got a great idea. This little girl is going on the air with you. Huh? Oh, goody! Oh, yes, it, it, it's great human interest. Oh, no, look, wait a minute, Mr. Carter. I don't think that's such a good idea. No, uh, the little girl might be nervous. Nonsense. <laughs> I don't have a nerve in my whole little body. <laughs> Can you get this light set up, please? Mr. Henshaw, maybe I should talk to you for a few minutes before no. we go on national Can't television. Can't you see that I'm busy? Now, please, don't bother me. All right. All right. If you don't want to discuss the boo-boos that you wrote in Chapter 7, that's okay with me. Boo-boo? What boo-boo in Chapter 7? Well, let me ask you. Was your heroine, Helen, really going to kill herself with but that gun? Of course gun? she was going to kill herself. Well, I don't see how she could, because, see, way back here on page 50, you wrote that Helen took the gun and emptied it of the bullets. Now, how in the world was she going to kill herself with an empty gun? It seems kind of dumb to me. Yes, look, uh, here's uh, $20. Yes. I said the mistake was on page 50. Okay, <laughs> okay. So you found a few small mistakes. Well, fortunately, the big selling point of my book is the surprise ending. Oh, yes, the surprise ending. I almost forgot about that. I have a feeling I'm going to be sorry you didn't. On the last page, you said, mm. and I quote, Okay, Detective Robin said anxiously, take off his mask. Why? It's Leonard Marcello, he expostulated. <laughs> Leonard smiled, and a tear came to his eye as he heard the siren in the distance. The end. Now that's writing. <laughs> well, what's wrong with it? 
You mean beside the cliches? Well, for one thing, Leonard Marcello couldn't possibly have been the murderer because he was left-handed. Says who? Says you, Mr. Henshaw, right here on page 75. The principal thing about Leonard's left-handedness was that his right hand was almost useless. <laughs> all right, all right. There, there. The mistake was on 75. <laughs> now that's all I have. We're up. We're ready, Mr. Henshaw. Oh, goody, we're on. Oh, no, no, please don't mention this on television. It, it would ruin me, really. Well. Well, I'll, I'll do anything you ask. <laughs> anything? Anything. Uh, Mr. Henshaw, please, uh, we're ready. Oh, yes, right over here. Fine. Stand by. <laughs> uh, we're on. Yeah. This gentleman is Victor Henshaw, who's just been chosen by the Mystery Writers League as the author of the year. Yes. And this is Alice Portnoy, his biggest fan. <laughs> Before I thank the Mystery Writers League for this great honor, I'd like to say a few words about my sensational book, who is an intricately written thriller that is put together like a fine puzzle. Especially on page 75. <laughs> yes. But even more important than my book is a wonderful group called the, uh, the, uh, the Firefied Girls of America. <laughs> Mr. Hinshaw here is the most generous person we Fireside Girls know. Yes, for a small contribution, you can send a Fireside Girl to camp. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs>